I'm being ultra cautious this morning because as you can see, hopefully you can see, the road is glistening with ice. Temperature's showing minus four and I've got this steep hill here. Not only is this hill steep and it can get icy, it's also full of potholes. And given my start to the day, I'm being ultra cautious. As usual, I'm taking the Grantham Canal towpath on my way to meet Wendy. It's about 35, 40 minutes ride. And then we're gonna go off into the Vale of Beaver, stop for coffee and ride back. Don't know how far we'll be going, probably 40, 50 miles, I would think. Temperature's risen now, it's minus three, <laughs> almost like summer. It's that cold on my face, I'm having a job to talk. Canal's frozen over this morning, shows how cold it is. But I'm toasty warm because I'm wearing the Vulcan heated gloves and the Vulcan heated socks, so I'm nice and warm. Have you ever had those mornings where you really think you should probably stay in? That something's trying to tell you to stay in. <laughs> and I've had one of those this morning. Lots of messing about, you know, getting, getting the bike ready and then realising I've forgotten things. The last thing I remembered before I left were my riding glasses, which are just reactive sunglasses. And uh, had to take my boots off to go upstairs and get them. Rushed back down again, got my boots on, put my glasses on. And I thought I was having a job to see. And it was then I realised I'd actually put some reading glasses on, which happened to be the same colour. Then I was doing my jacket up and the zip broke. So all in all, I'm thinking maybe something's telling me to stay in. So it's another reason to be very, very careful, I think, today. Ooh. Watch the puddles. Will be a bit interesting. I'm just going to go slow, boy. It's 11.30 in the morning and it's still minus 1C. So it's bloody cold. <laughs> but typically, wind is very warm. Sorry? I said typically you're very warm, although <laughs> you say your toes are. Me, yeah, my toes to are just starting to cool down. had to take the safe option. Uh, on the side of caution. I hadn't noticed. Yeah. Just show everyone for the camera. The minute you break, let's try a bit up here where it's icy. Yeah, 
Crikey. That's not me pushing it. Yeah, that have you over. Yeah, so. Just as I thought it was thawing. Yeah, this bit is, oof. So safer to walk. Yeah, well, I felt, uh, it's because I was pedaling and I thought, oh, my gears are not working properly. And that's why I stopped. And when I braked to stop, I thought, oof. <laughs> Like that road runner, you know, the little legs were going and yeah. nothing happening. I'm breaking and it's just not gripping at all, it's just the ice. We've taken an executive decision here and uh, gone to the main road. We don't like this road, it's fairly busy, as you can see, quite a lot of lorries on here but it's going to be safer <laughs> one way or another <laughs> so we're turning right here if you watch our rides regularly you'll know that we enjoy the views i mean it's really what makes a ride for us uh, we've got a wonderful view here out over the Vale of Trent and it set me thinking because a lot of people we see on their bikes they have their heads down they're powering along but there's so much more around us that we can enjoy and something brought that home to me recently uh, Mike Ainsworth and I took out a blind guy called Charles and Charles is totally blind now it's in his 50s, used to love cycling, but obviously that's difficult. But he has a tandem and his young daughter takes him out. She's the uh, pilot, he's the stoker. So we've taken him out a couple of times. And what it really brought home to us is how much we take for granted all the things that we see and enjoy. And it's also made us understand communication more because you need to communicate and when we're riding obviously we need to communicate what we're doing but also we communicate what we're seeing and I would say we actually see more because we're looking for things to describe to him And it's interesting how Charles has adapted. For example, he changed his gear cables and indexed his gears. <laughs> now he's I done don't that. Know to how to do that? <laughs> no, exactly. Many sighted people wouldn't even do that. And I would say that Charles probably wouldn't see it as a disability. It's just he has to adapt to the situation he's in. I think it's a lesson to all of us, really and make us appreciate what's around us. Yeah, not take it for granted. Exactly. So if you hear me describing things that are pretty, pretty damn obvious to the viewer, you'll know I'm doing it so that Charles and anyone else that has a sight problem can understand what we're seeing. The only problem I have with Charles is that we were going up a hill and he actually questioned whether I was pedaling. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this fantastic? I mean, we can see literally for miles yeah and we can certainly see it today we're going so slow down this yeah. hill <laughs> this is the slowest i've ever been down this hill I know, we're, me. we're actually probably in more danger from braking than we are <laughs> going fast so we've got the power station over to the left steaming away yeah. that's over near east Midlands airport isn't it and then to the right, we've got the power stations over on the Trent, miles away. So I think we're, we're heading for our coffee stop, Wendy, aren't we? Yep. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Should we sit outside or in? <laughs> Well, you can sit outside if you're that hot, but I'm going in. 
So this coffee shop at Long Clawson we've been to once before and quite handily you can take your bikes around the back which is good. I've actually shortened the ride slightly today because it is just too damn cold. Not so much from the body point of view but really it's just this worry about the road being They're just icy. Ice. They're really icy. I mean you're all right on these main ones but those back ones are yeah. just horrendous aren't they? It's where you've got the thick edges. And we're both wearing our new bib tights today so we don't want to go over and damage those as well as us. I'd rather not break a bone before my holiday. Oh Again. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Wind is off on another holiday it'll be no surprise I know. <laughs> I need some sunshine. It's now one o'clock and the temperature has started to, to drop again. It actually got up to the balmy heights of zero degrees C but it's now starting to drop again so probably time to head home. We've had yeah. a nice lunch. A bit of fresh air. Yeah a bit of fresh air. Beautiful sunshine. And lovely scenery, lovely autumn colours. Beautiful still. scenery. Just a but, bit icy. Yeah we're having to be careful we've got these dry patches but then suddenly you get into a a damp patch that could be icy so uh, we're being very very careful and our thoughts are turning to next year and the sort of rides we, we're doing or planning to do. We've got several plans and uh, we'll talk about those another time when we start to firm them up. But have you got any plans? If you have please share them in the comments. Uh, it'd be nice to know what each of us are doing. Are there any epic rides planned? It's my aim to persuade Wendy to come on an Audax with me. No. I've only been on one but I think I am getting the bug a little bit. Probably do one or two a year. Uh, I think you're concerned Wendy about time pressure. Yeah, yeah I don't like the idea of having to push it and not stop and smell the roses now. Yeah. No, I don't. But I mean when you consider we me. we finished with over <laughs> I think it was about an hour and a half to spare. No, you did an amazing pace. Yeah. I would never do it at the pace you did that at. <laughs> but I think the beauty of the beauty of the Audax is you don't have to finish it if you don't want to. Uh, just phone them and let them know that you're not finishing. Can you do that within 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> we quite enjoyed our ride that we did from Ely where we got the train over to Ely and then rode yeah, back. Yeah, I enjoyed that. So we'll probably do something a bit more like that. Yeah. Uh, but maybe something that takes us two or three days to get back. Yeah. I also have the idea to go to somewhere in France, maybe go by train or whatever and then ride back to the UK. Although I'm going to try and ride as much as possible over the winter, uh, you will see more reviews from me. I've got a couple more reviews in the pipeline. The main one being this uh, Chili Tech Pro 2 cam. So I hope to get that to you within the next couple of weeks. And by now you'll have seen the review of the Live All Smart Helmet. Now that was suggested to me by a viewer, Patrick. So if you've got any items that you particularly like, that you think are new and innovative, or help you to ride better, safer, longer, whatever, then please let me know and we'll see if we can get them in to review them. For those of you interested in trikes then hopefully I'll be meeting up with Al who was the trike rider who was riding in front of me on the Audax video 
Now you actually would have seen a video about that had one of us not got the wrong day. <laughs> we rode over to Lincoln to meet Al and a group of trike riders. They were meeting at the giant store. We waited for about an hour. <laughs> Nobody turned up. No. Turns out Wendy had got the wrong day. <laughs> Pinocchio. <laughs> yeah, I had got the wrong day. I didn't read the small print. And I kept saying, are you sure? Yeah, I said, yeah, of yeah, course I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah, I got the Saturday instead of the Sunday. As it happened, Saturday was a lovely riding day. It was, yeah. And we, we had a great it. day, yeah. so there was, was nothing lovely. lost. No. But we will meet up with Al again and his friends and we'll see what this trike riding is all about. This is a lovely scene, really English pastoral scene and the ridges in the fields here for those that don't know it's called Ridge and Furrow and it's an old medieval way of farming so this is a remnant of medieval farming practices. You probably can't see this, but we can see in the distance the vapour trail or smoke trails as it is from the red arrows that are practicing. And that actually adds up now because I had planned today to take the drone up oh, yeah. on a trail at Collingham. Uh, it would have been quite nice with the water and the river but uh, when I checked the drone safe app it showed that there was a NOTAM which is notices to airmen showing a big restriction around Waddington area that stretched right out to the area I wanted to fly it in and that is that's until this evening and that's clearly why now the Red Arrows are obviously using that airspace Well, this is where you joined me this morning. I'm now heading back along the Grantham Canal. Still frozen. It's now half past two. And it's minus two again. Now, today is going to be close on 50 miles for me. But actually, I think we're going to have to trim our distances back. Our average is 50 miles on these just days out meandering around but I think we're gonna have to reduce them probably make them more like 30 really because if it's too icy in the mornings it's really not worth risking it I have had several offs on the ice the first of which was on this bend here where a lot of water collects and it's just not worth injuring yourself but I think if we can just get out for two or three hours stop and have a coffee have a chat get back it'll keep us sane over the winter it's strange look that the canal to my right is frozen and then suddenly here it's not frozen there's a distinct delineation between the frozen and the liquid and I can't see why that would be I've just stopped on the towpath to let a lady pass she was going to walk in the grass to let me pass, but I said, no, you come, I'll wait. And she thanked me for being a considerate cyclist because she said many aren't. And that's a great shame, isn't it? Really, that somebody should comment and thank you for being considerate. The nice thing was, we had a nice chat. She was from Northern Ireland. She had that lovely Northern Ireland accent. 
and she was just out for a walk along the canal enjoying this wonderful afternoon so by being polite and letting her through ended up having a nice chat with her one bonus of this frosty weather is that these muddy patches along here on the towpath are nice and firm so as they say every cloud has a silver lining this is my favorite part of the canal it's very tranquil Now I often talk about my horrible hill that I have to go up locals will know it as Castorp Hill but it's quite treacherous this morning when I went down there and I guess it's going to be very much the same because it's not thawed and of course we're bang on school run time and a lot of school run traffic uses that road so double the reason not to use it today well triple really because it's quite a hard hill to climb so any excuse to miss it well that's me nearly home it's been a good day kept warm courtesy of these Vulcan gloves and socks so as always thanks for watching and I look forward to you joining us next time bye for now